Hey guys, this is me Rachit and welcome to yet another video. Today we are going to talk about Google Summer of Code, which is also known as GSOC in short. Um, to begin with, GSOC is nothing but an open source initiative from Google itself, wherein it collaborates with university students and open source organizations to promote the open source culture. So what happens is that um, so thousands and lakhs of students apply for GSOC and there are so many organizations also who apply for GSOC. And then Google filters out some organizations and some students who will get finally selected. And then the students are supposed to work for some organizations they got selected for. And once they complete GSOC successfully, they get the GSOC certificate and the stipend is like really very, very awesome. It's uh, around 170,000 in Indian rupee. And Google is paying the students out of their pocket. It's not the organization that the students are working for, but the Google itself is paying the students to do work for the to do work to work on projects for other organizations so google is paying the students from their own pockets to promote open source culture and the students are then working on open source projects for the organizations they got selected for so i have never done gsoc when i was in college and i it, and i started doing a lot of research so uh, in order to make a video on gsoc but then i thought it won't do justice um, because I might miss out a couple of points. So then I turned over to Akshay who is one of my college friends. He cracked GSOC continuously for two years when he was in college and now he's working with me as a software engineer at Microsoft. So thank you Akshay for taking out the time from your schedule and, and recording this session wherein we are trying to give tips to the other beginner students and what GSOC is all about and get you started with GSOC. So Akshay, before getting into what is GSOC and all these kind of things, can you just first simply iterate on three to four points of what are the benefits that this offers? So to uh, earn a very good stipend uh, using GSOC. So the stipend uh, varies from country to country. They have some sort of formula which, so in India, it's actually uh, one lakh 60,000 to 70,000 depending on uh, the rate of dollar to rupee conversion. So uh, you can go through that. Uh, the second benefit would be that uh, uh, you would get a chance to interview at Google, direct interview, no resume shortlisting here. Uh, so if you have a OCG, don't mind. Uh, so you will get a chance to interview at Google uh, once the GSOC is done. So Google will send you a mail in which they will give you a link from where you can apply on any of the three roles in any location at Google all over the world. And there is no time limit for it. So you can apply right now itself after the completion of your uh, uh, college days or you can apply six years from from now there is no issue you can even apply for uh, internship there so so that's a good opportunity golden opportunity i would say open source people would know you even better that's one of the benefits the most important thing uh, the most important thing i would see here is that you would get a lot of ex uh, exposure to production uh, uh, level code what actual what kind of code actually go uh, works in the real world environment you won't be doing community programming or you won't be uh, doing um, single page applications or something like that you would be actually building something which will be used by a thousand a thousands of users all right thanks for telling that akshay and now um, i think you can get started uh, you can use the whiteboard feel free to use the whiteboard and over to you mm, let's go to the sketchpad and so here the main organization is uh, let's say it's google and what Google does is that Google invites applications from the mentoring organizations O1, O2, and O3. These organizations can be uh, any organization, suppose for example, LibreOffice, Simpy, VideoLearn, or KDE, or some other app, or Eclipse. Okay, uh, so uh, these organizations, what they will do is that since they are interested in getting into Google Summer of Code and they want a bunch of summer interns, what they will do is that they will approach Google with their application form. Google will ask a few questions to the organizations that why they want to be in the program, how is this going to benefit the open source community and these organizations will fill all the all the questions and answers and they will submit their applications for Google to review. Once Google review the applications, Google will select a few app, uh, few applicant applications based on it based on Google's uh, you know judgment and they will select a few applications suppose O1 is selected, O2 is selected and O3 is rejected. Uh, it is not in our hand in which uh, which 
uh, it is not in our hand which organization will be selected or rejected but it's totally google choice and we cannot do anything in it but once the organizations are selected basically january 26 uh, sorry uh, feb 26 is the date uh, in which the list of selected organization will come out now as a student what we have to do is that we have to go through the organizations page we have to go uh, through the different projects that the organizations are are offering in the google summer of code even we can propose a new project but we we should be more familiar first rather than proposing something arbitrary so suppose the name of projects are p1 and p2 uh, projects can be anything in any language whichever you like so each project will have a set of mentors uh, even a single mentor or a multiple mentors uh, that is not an issue suppose p1 has a mentor of m1 and m2 so now what happens is that uh, once you are interested in some specific project, suppose a, a student S1 is interested in the project P1, what he will do is that uh, he will go through the details of the project, he will set up the build, he will look through the source code, he will look at the source code, what are the go things going to change and how they will change and he will form a proposal. But he should not make it arbitrary like on his own judgment. He should, uh, he should contact the mentors first he should sh show them that he is worthy of the project. He, he should uh, show them his approach on the project and he should take a feedback on what what more is to be done. Or basically, uh, they should know the organization's approach of a project, like what they want to get out of it. Uh, it's not something that a student would know automatically or it would be written on the organization's page. It's basically what a mentor can tell you. Once you go through, through these you know, steps, every student will get the basic idea of what needs to be done and uh, what are the changes that he has to do in order to make the project successful. So he will form a proposal on the basis of uh, the interactions. Uh, the proposal will describe uh, what are the uh, what are the basic criteria of the project and why he is interested in that. What are his previous contributions to the organizations, where he wants to make the changes uh, and, and other things basically about his own background, why this organization and these projects interest him. So he has to write all of these down in the proposal and basically what Google suggests is that you can make up to five proposals, five such proposals in one GSOC and you can apply with this proposal on the GSOC website and once these proposals are submitted, mental organizations will review your proposal and depending on the number of seats they have, they will select a student for uh, whatever projects they have applied. So uh, this is the whole entire process of um, Google Summer of Code. And now let's go back to the Google Summer of Code website and uh, let's uh, browse through the organizations list. Since we don't have any organizations list for Google Summer of Code 2019, we will go through the organization list of uh, previous year GSOCs. So as we can see GSOC 28, in the GSOC 2018 program, 1072 projects were completed with 206 open source organizations. So let's uh, go through the list of organizations in GSOC 2018. So here is the list of the organizations, uh, like uh, you can scroll down and you can go through uh, all of the list, what an organization does, you can go through uh, their, their previous year projects, uh, basically they have a basic you know, introduction of what they do, uh, you can see their projects like which were completed, which were completed last year, you can go through their uh, ideas list, you can go through their projects on what tech they work on and you can filter the, your organization on the basis of that. Uh, if you are interested in working on some specific technology like virtual reality, like uh, or you are thinking on working on some specific languages like C++, like Java, like Python. So basically you can draw through all the list. And now what happens is that uh, since uh, once you shortlist uh, your organizations, you need to get familiar with their working style. So here is the thing. Suppose I work on some specific organizations, so we need to get in touch with them. So here is the an example. Let's take LibreOffice. LibreOffice is the open source of, of Office Suite, uh, which has uh, some projects and it has been getting selected for basically past few years uh, in GSOC. So basically, here is the explanation explanation of what they do. It is the reading open source Office Suite and like that technology stack is C plus plus Java and Python. So uh, like what you need to do once you select an organization, you need to uh, go to the ideas list. Uh, if you are familiar with the language and the tech stack, then you need to go to the ideas ideas list. And if you want to directly communicate with their 
uh, organ with the organization you can go through their irc channel you can you can join them on free node you can talk to the developers you can mail them on mail, uh, on the mailing list that you are interested in developing libre office I, irc channel is as a uh, basically internet relay chat and what they do is that uh, basically they are basically a, a junction to communicate between different developers uh, once you have uh, some kind of queries to resolve or you, you have something to forward to the developers of the channel you can consider them as as a, a group chat between a lot of developers so to get involved in the development chat you need to join the irc channel and you need to get familiar with uh, what the people do but before that you need to basically look at their project see if something suits you or not so here is the thing uh, so basically if we go through some specific uh, organizations ideas list so we get a bunch of ideas like suppose we can work on android application or we can work on some bcl functionality basically some visual library or something so we can work on ux we can work on backend we can work on a lot of things here so uh, how so this is a you know specific example so how you will search for uh, you know any random uh, google summer of code organization you will just need you just need to go to google and you just need to write the organization's name suppose simpy and you need to write uh, you need to write how to contribute so uh, you will go to the you will be redirected to the list on uh, you will be redirected to a talk on how you can start contributing uh, you how you can actually pull the source code how you can build it how you can uh, actually start submitting patches how you can get in contact with uh, with the other developers who are working on the project uh, how can you uh, make pull request how can people review them and you will also get an idea you, you will also get links to you know the, the documentation of projects and what are the suits that that uh, the project is following so like for example uh, similar to irc uh, some projects have uh, other type of ch chat rooms like for example simpy has gitter now let's go to simpy gitter and we are here uh, so we can see uh, all the people who are working there uh, like if you want to specifically ping someone or if you want to uh, put some uh, uh, query in the post we can just uh, join the room and we can type our message here uh, like if we want to some uh, to ask something to someone or all the developers we can do some personal chat one to one conversations itself so these are the things that we should look forward to to make our presence felt in the open source community people should know us that this guy is working on this kind of project so like uh, they would be looking forward for you actually uh, organizations want new people to start contributing to them uh, that's the whole essence of open source organizations so now once you go through these things like how you have set up the software you have created the pull request um, and uh, you have you know uh, basic, you have a basic knowledge of the code base now what you need to do is uh, you need to form a proposal so this is the main part where you need to do all the hard work you need to get in touch with your mentors you need to go through all the previous source code that is there which is uh, related to your project you need to explain what is happening your project your project proposal should not be something on a on a higher side that nobody is able to understand and the gsop proposal should not be uh, constrained to basically like a smaller number of pages or something like that uh, there is no limit on number of pages and i would suggest that your proposal should be between 5 to 20 pages depending on how how deep you are trying to explain your problems and the thing is uh, once you create a proposal you should get it reviewed by your mentor because he has a much more uh, better he has a better understanding of what needs to be done uh, from the organization's perspective of the project and you should not uh, be attentively sub uh, submit your project uh, on the google website you should first uh, make make the organization review it and if it's and if they have some changes just make it and the major part of your gsop proposal would be the timeline on how you are going to manage your time for the project in in what time which tasks you are going to complete and it should not be you know like on a you know a higher level it should be you know point to point and uh, people should know that in this time period you are going to work on this much because there are two midterm reviews for your project you need to be uh, on target with your with, with your goals in which you have mentioned in the proposal so these are the basic things you need to keep in your mind